Uh, any purchase of a stake in the truck maker would come at a time the outlook is uncertain following, of course, the triple disaster. Double uh, jeopardy for Malaysia Airlines faced with uh, jet fuel hikes and a lull in travel. The airline has cut flights to Tokyo uh, down to seven from 11 times a week. Growth still expected, but a lot lower than the targeted 10% increase in capacity. Karen. Uh, Bernie, the nuclear disaster in Japan brings into focus nuclear energy and the safety of it. And many emerging economies such as China have plans to build nuclear reactors and those plans are a large part of the BRICS summit going on currently. With more, we're joined by Vasilios Agalides, who is director of the Centre for Energy Research at the University of so New South Wales. Um, if we can pick up on this uh, severity rating that came out recently from Japan, that the disaster is as bad as Chernobyl, how big is this uh, in your book and how key will this be for future nuclear decisions? Well, it's important to understand that although both the accidents have been rated seven in the international nuclear and radiological event scale, uh, they don't mean that they both are the same magnitude. First of all, that the, the nuclear accident in Chernobyl was a lot worse uh, up to now, of course. Uh, so the equivalent of what happened in Fukushima, it's about 10% of total volume radiation up to now. Uh, so we, we cannot compare the two accidents, although they have the same rating scale. Uh, what is important also to understand is that uh, we don't have any deaths yet from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant, uh, as we had in the Chernobyl area. We don't actually also have the same problem to, to, to contain. Uh, Japanese officials tell us that uh, the containment uh, vessels are intact, and that's a very, very important matter to consider. And uh, the Chernobyl case is very different. We had a fire that was burning for about 10 days, and that was uh, very mm -hmm. hard to, uh, to contain. Not only that, right. the radiation activ uh, radioactive activity went up in the air for about 10 kilometers, and then the mm -hmm. area where the radioactivity increased was about 500 kilometers. Now, we don't have the same issues now in Japan. We just have the uh, uh, same rating, but it's not uh -huh. the same problem that we have to face. Okay. Yeah. Professor, uh, Bernie in Hong Kong, uh, you know, when, when we talked uh, uh, several weeks ago, um, the assumption at that point was that, the, that what, there was progress and that within a finite amount of time that the situation in Fukushima would be contained. Now, you know, the U.S. is stuck to its guns with the need for nuclear, but we saw politically, uh, you know, what even a review program in Germany did to Angela Merkel uh, in a recent state election, uh, and uh, really her party got pummeled. So the political risk of sticking to uh, you're, you know, sticking to, a, to nuclearization as a preferred option becomes more and more dangerous as the weeks pass by. Are, are some administrations, are some countries starting, in your view, to vacillate? Well, uh, it's, uh, it's very important that we ask this question, and I don't actually see it as a political risk. I see it as an economic risk. The reason for that is that nuclear energy is a lot more costlier than what we see on the books and what people perceive. The, the reason for that is basically that accidents like the one that we had in Fukushima recently and the ones that we had previously in Chernobyl and the Three Miles I uh, Island in the U.S. have cost us a lot of money, and that cost has not been part of the, of the economic cost when we price uh, nuclear nuclear energy. So what is very important to understand is that when we get to the bottom line of what nuclear energy costs to a particular country, it's a lot more than what we see actually from the construction and operating costs. That is why it's important to understand that although nuclear is very, very good when it comes to reduction of emissions, it's not very good when it comes to the economic pricing and risk. Yeah, to, to pick up on Bernie's point, in fact, Germany apparently has shut down seven of its oldest nuclear reactors. Uh, Vasilios, where does this leave the likes of wind and solar? Because there is a lot of public debate and discussion now that we might see more traction for these as uh, other forms of energy. Well, of course, the wind and solar have made a lot of progress in the last 20 years, and we are very close to breaking grounds here when we have, for instance, one wind turbine rating up to 7 megawatts, and that, that was uh, uh, recently announced. Uh, we have a lot of technologies for building wind farms offshore, and they are going on, on, online as we speak, and we have a lot of investment that is going also into the solar technologies. What is difficult for, for, for the renewables energy to deliver is basically an intermediate 
immediate uh, solution because they cannot uh, power the significant loads like what the nuclear, uh, the nuclear stations can do. Although, having said that, if we were to invest a lot of the R&D and a lot of money to make sure that the wind and solars are moving forward, we will be able to see in the less than 10 years from now significant contributions from wind and solar and significant solutions coming from these two technologies because they are complementary. We have a lot of resources uh, in many countries around the globe and in fact even when we don't have solar we have a lot of wind in many countries and therefore we can actually solve the, the problem but not immediately. We have to invest and we have to wait for, uh, for further developments in the field of uh, large scale that is a gigawatt scale of uh, wind, solar and so on. Yeah, I keep having these images of all those big wind turbines on the, the border mm -hmm. of uh, yes. Bratislava and uh, Vienna. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today, Professor. Much appreciated. Uh, Vasilios Agalidis, who is Director of the Centre for Energy Research at the University of New South Wales. Up next, LG Electronics ups its sales forecast for Taiwan amid expected demand for those 3D LCDs. We'll have details on that next. Thank you.